It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. I'm back with Hometown Commander. We're back for another episode of Millsy Updates, the show where I take you through the updates I've done to my main decks or test decks or the things that I'm brewing on just to get you a continued look into my mindset and what I'm playing personally and not just brewing for the channel. Um, this week we only have one Millsy Brews because we're starting the Brawl videos this week. Doctor Who is coming next week and I can't wait for that content. I'm so excited. I'm brewing and I'm having a great time brewing. And so I thought I'd give you um, a look into some more of the decks I've been testing as of lately on the, on the end to get you ready for the, the new content. Today we're looking at a deck I've had a ton of fun uh, not only brewing but testing. Um, it, it's been a joke in my playgroup for a long time that every time there's new is it commander I always joke is this the is it commander that's going to get me interested in is it spells or or, or what and uh, I knew when I, I saw Vika that uh, I liked it because I love the payoff of Vika it's a 7 mana Phyrexian Nightmare 6-6 six, six with ward 3 and pay 3 life it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell you make x 11 red Phyrexian Goblin tokens where x is the mana value of that spell they gain haste until end of turn um, as anyone in my play group, and I think as you've seen from the channel uh, so far, you know I am a sucker for a good token deck, especially decks that uh, get tokens from doing things you want to do anyway. And I knew I was going to love this commander. Uh, the only downside to Avika, which is I feel like the thing that my deck is slowly, slowly getting better at, is she is seven mana, or it is seven mana, and that can be tough to get to some games. So obviously I'm, I'm doing my best to add more mana rocks and things like that to get ourselves more consistently to seven mana. Uh, but I've found that the turn after Ovika comes down generally tends to be the turn where stuff just starts having going haywire. Um, my deck isn't as conventional as a lot of people are playing Ovika. I think when I started the deck I wanted it to be very um, across the board and a lot of value. But I think as I sat and played the deck more I realized the deck needed to be a spell slinger deck. And I've tried to build it um, with my favorite uh, enchantment in mind, Arcane Bombardment. This is an Arcane Bombardment deck at the end of the day, or, or I would like to be one of the finishing lines that you can use. Um, we're going to get lots of tokens. We're going to try to find ways to either buff the tokens up or use them to our benefit. I mean, there is, of course, room to just attack through. We have Impact Tremors. We have Goblin Bombardment. There's plenty of ways to kind of pay off our, our tokens, and we'll talk about those as we go through the list. The, the list is a little sweaty. I'm playing a few extra turn spells, and I'm playing a few um, things like that up on the top end. But uh, we will jam through those as we go. Mana base, just trying out a lot of the red, blue lands, trying out the new Wrathless Spire. Yet to see it yet, but it's in here. Um, it's not good because we have a couple a couple of rocks we want to go find, but mainly it's just a, a assortment of red, red blue lands. Got the uh, Reliquary Tower because we do have a chance to draw a bunch of cards. And in fact, that's one of the other things I added to the list this time was a lot more card draw um, because I found that the issue with the V because we were never actually hitting seven or we were taking us too long or we'd hit that mana and just dump our hand and have nothing left. So I'm just trying to make sure that we kind of can cover all bases. Mystic Sanctuary seems kind of cool. Um, if it is untapped, we can put an industry from our graveyard back on top of our deck. It's not going to happen all that often, but hey, it is an island, so it could matter for other card effects. Just six enchantments. The deck, I think, was playing 10 or 12 previously. I said to bring it down, go more towards the spells, get the spell singing starter. A cane wood barman, again, one of the reasons I built uh, my first cast spell singing deck and, and, and one of the end games I'd like for this deck. It says whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, exile an instant or sorcery at random from your graveyard, then copy each card exiled with Arcane Bombardment. You can cast any number of them without paying their mana cost. Uh, Bombardment would not be in here if you didn't cast the copies. Because you cast the copies, we're basically getting uh, hopefully a ton of free goblins every turn as we're casting spells. Um, the end game with Bombardment is to put you know, an extra turn spell or a mana generation spell like Jessica's Will underneath Arcane Bombardment, and you're going to more or less just print value. Um, I love getting some cheeky spells like Tasha's Hideous Laughter or something like that under Arcane Bombardment because they can do a lot of damage at the same time. But I love this card. It's one of my favorite spell singing finishers, and it pairs really well with Thousand Year Storm, uh, the other half of this combo, if we can get it. it. says whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, copy it for each... Um, instant sorcery you cast before it this turn you can choose new copies this is just going to help turn certain of our spells into ending the game quicker and uh, letting us have some fun no we don't get the goblins because we're copying and not casting but hey it gives us more um 
food for the fire. Uh, we do have other things that care about copying spells. So it's not like we lose that value. But again, if we're copying those spells, most of the time we can get really good value. City of Fire, whatever source we control will deal damage to a permanent or player. It deals triple that damage instead. This is great with the goblins because then they hit pretty hard. This is great for things like Impact Tremor or Goblin Bombardment because then they get tripled. Uh, Impact Tremor deals a damage to each opponent when a creature enters the battlefield. Under our control, Goblin Bombardment lets us sacrifice a creature to deal one damage to any target. So again, these are ways for us to pay off what we're doing and hopefully spread some damage out above about our opponents. Um, 11 artifacts, I really feel like this probably needs to be 14. Um, I know that I probably need to take out a couple spells for a couple more mana rocks, but I, I, I'm kind of working my way up testing it to get there. Uh, Arcane Signet, Felwar, uh, Heraldic Banner, Is it Signet, Mindstone, Mox Opal, uh, Soul Ring, and the Talisman for our mana rocks. Uh, Heraldic Banner, uh, I do believe those goblins come in as red, so we're pretty much always going to want to select red for Heraldic Banner. That way they get that flat buff. Skull Clamp, um, to clamp those 1-1s one if we don't have any active buffs out to get to draw two cards. Uh, Frexen Altar to sacrifice them for mana, that way we can keep playing spells. And then Coat of Arms, like I said before, one of my favorite um, Tribal Ender cards, uh, because it, when we get all those goblins out, they just become big. I remember the first game I saw a Coat of Arms, I had like 11 goblins out. They were all like 10-10s, and they j were just beating down by opponents. Um, the only downside of Coat of Arms, of course, is that it gives every creature this buff on the battlefield. So if our opponents are playing Tribal decks as well, we potentially have a chance to give them some buffs. Uh, but I don't think we're going to worry about it. I think we're going to be making enough gobos that it's, it's just not going to matter. And uh, we're going to take fun advantage of it. Being five mana is not a big deal either. Our, our commander's seven. We're ideally going to be playing it after our commander anyway. I think the best part about Coat of Arms is there is a scenario where you pay five mana for Coat of Arms with Ophika out. You get five, five, you get five, one, one goblins. Coat of Arm comes down, they're all now 5-5s, five and you now have 25 power on the board from a 5-mana spell. And you can see just how this deck can get out of hand once it starts running. Um, getting up into our uh, instance, uh, we are playing some, some more... Uh, uh, some more gritty things in Force of Will and Deflecting Swat, just because we do want some protection. I haven't had a Force of Will, so it was something I threw in the deck when I was testing it, because I wanted to have some protection. Uh, there is a world where we just get countered out of our game plan, or someone uh, tries to punish us, uh, and we need a way to stop that, or <laughs> try to push through for game. Brainstorm, um, Frantic Search, and Prismar Command, mainly in here for some draw. Brainstorm, look at the top three. Draw the top three, put two back on top. Frantic Search, uh, draw two, then discard two, and we untap up to three lands. And then Prismar Command, uh, the main one we're using is draw two, then discard two, but we can also get a treasure or deal damage or destroy an artifact if we want to, but it's mainly there for the draw two, discard two. And again, the point of the discarding is we're feeding for our cane environment when that or that eventually comes, if we can protect our graveyard. Mystic Reflection uh, was never really a card I thought about uh, when the first time I built the deck, but then I saw it on EDH Rec, and the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. We have Mystic Reflection, and we cast a spell, respond with Mystic Reflection, choose uh, a non-legendary creature in our deck. Uh, we roast Master, Storm Kill an Artist, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different choices we choose. And then the next time creatures come in off that original spell cast with Ovika, they all come in as copies of that. And now we're just going to create a better board state than we had before. Mystical Tutor for a little bit of search. Nexus of Fate is one of our extra turn spells. I like about Nexus of Fate, it goes back in the deck, so we can potentially see it multiple times. Rapid Hybrid and Reality Shift for some removal. One destroys, one exiles. Storm King's Thunder is part is one half of a pretty fun combo. This is whenever you cast your next instant sorcery spell, you cast it X times. You may choose new targets for the copy. Um, my favorite through line with Storm King's Thunder is Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Uh, it's a spell that says each opponent exiles the cards from the top of their library until they hit exile cards with mana value 20 or more. And then those cards stay in exile, so you're basically milling into exile. Um, you put a number like six or seven in a Storm King's Thunder, and then you cast Atasha's Hideous Laughter, and you're probably going to nuke most of your opponents. 
out of their decks. Uh, the decks you're not going to nuke are going to be creature, big creature decks, but you're probably going to mill them for enough cards that it's going to hurt. And then we made, what, 10? In the case where Storm King's Thunder is 7, we made 10 goblins off the Storm King's Thunder and 3 goblins off the Tao Shui's Hideous Laughter, and we just probably milled our opponents for 70 cards. And now the game states even, you know, right, even, even more in our favor. And then a card I hadn't thought about until the last round of edits where I was trying to think about draw was Valkyrie Awakening, a card that, of course, has held a lot of value because it's a really good card. It has a land on the back, which is always helpful. But on the front side, it's putting a number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library if you do draw that many cards plus one. So put two on the bottom, draw three. Put one on the bottom, draw two. I think this is important because we're probably going to draw cards as, or lands, you know, that we don't need. Nuke them to the bottom, get new cards. Or, worst case scenario, this will come in uh, as a land in the early game if we need it to. All right, getting into the sorceries, and this is where a lot of the deck kind of changed. I took out a lot of the big bomby um, spells like Crackle with Power, Jai's Emulating Inferno, as much as I like those cards and they're fun. Um, I kind of wanted to build into more of this, just, just cast spells to get goblins down to win the game rather than trying to just throw 18 mana into a Crackle with Power and, and, and deal all that damage. Um, so there are a couple cards in here that are red because uh, these are the cards that were revealed with the uh, set bundles, or the... Uh, the the new scene bundles that are coming out with Lord of the Rings at the end of the year. Uh, so the deck isn't technically illegal as it sits. My playgroup isn't really that big on on restricting that kind of stuff. We have seen the card, so it's it's not that big of a deal. And um, I always like to test new things when I see them, just to see is this do what I want it to do. And I two of these spells I expect to do exactly what I want them to do. And I I want to get them underneath a uh, arcane Doom so bad. But let's go this, through the sorceries and. Um, We'll talk about my intentions. Assault on Osgiloth, Osgiloth was a card I saw immediately and wanted it for this deck. X triple red for a, a source that has a mass orcs X, and then goblins and orcs you control get double strike and haste until end of turn. Um, yeah, I'm in. You put any amount into X, you're getting X plus three uh, goblins, and then the orc mass orcs for X, and then all of your goblins uh, then get double strike and haste, even the ones that were already out there. So this is just going to get hard to deal with for most people. And then moving double strike makes it even worse because then they can't chump block them, right? If I have a bunch of 1-1 one, one gobos, uh, people just can't toss things in front of them because now they have double strike, and if I have any buffs for them, now it's a big problem, <laughs> and now they have to deal with 2-3-1 double striking goblins that may be tough for them. Uh, to deal with. Call Forth the Tempest is, again, one of the new cards uh, from these scene uh, bottles coming out later this year. And this is one of the ones that seems really fun to me because it's a board wipe, but it's a board wipe that's going to be really good for us. This is an eight mana red spell that has double cascade. So on cast, we're going to start flipping cards until we reveal a non, non, um, non-land spell or a spell that's, you know, that's less CMC than this spell. We get to cast it for free, which with Ovika out will get us more goblins. And then when this finally goes off, it says, call, the, call forth the Tempest deals damage equal to each creature your opponent's control, equal to the total mana value of other spells you've cast this turn. So if this is the first thing we cast in our turn. We're going to Cascade, Cascade, add those two together, and that's going to be the damage we dealt. But if we've cast a spell or two before this, then we're just going to add that number up and probably take out a whole board. And this is a one-sided board wipe for eight mana, which you hope it would be if we for investing eight mana into it. But I see this getting on average, and especially in this deck, um, this is going to get me 12 to 14 goblins. And now my opponent's board is wiped out, and I have those goblins ready to attack. This is a card I cannot wait to cast. And I also am really excited to put this underneath an arcane with Barman and see what, what kind of mess that can make in the turn. Cash Service Soon Jiao just got the reprint of Commander Masters. Um, I was prioritizing the extra turn spells that don't exile themselves. So we're not playing expropriate, we're not playing temporal. Um, uh, mastery we're not playing part the water veil uh, because those automatically exile themselves or all rinse epiphany they automatically exile themselves we want the ones that go to the graveyard because we're trying to stick them underneath arcane department so capture vision jow um temporal manipulation and time stretch are all the ones that can get stuck underneath um arcane department. i realize we're still playing appropriate because again 
got to end the game eventually, and that will help us end the game by just getting us more gobos. But um, we we'll want to prioritize these turn spells that we can get a new the arcane bombardment. Uh, my intention for time stretch and expropriate, if we see the arcane bombardment, is to toss them in your graveyard and don't cast them, and then let them try to get caught underneath the bombardment that way. But obviously, if we need to hard cast them, we can. I mean, both of them are going to make us a ton of goblin tokens, and then just end up helping us end the game. Expressive iteration, one of the better. Um, is it uh, is it kind of impulse spells we've seen in a long time? Look at the top three: one into the hand, one on the bottom, one you can play that turn. This is almost always better to be done to be played before you play your land for turn, so that if you hit the land off of this, you can use it off of this instead. You don't want to get in the scenario where you play your land for turn. You expressive iteration. You see two lands, and you 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 have to you know. You know, two lands on a spell you can't cast, and then you're just stuck bidding one of them. I think I always try to play it before my land drop, then that way we can kind of plan around it. Faithless Looting for some draw again. Draw two, discard two. Again, we're trying to dump things into the graveyard for Arcane Bombardment. Jessica's Will for some 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 kind of uh, impulse mana. Add a red for each card and target opponent's hand. Or we can exile the top three and play them until end of turn. I very seldom use Jessica's Will for the bottom half, but I have done it um, when you get a Jessica's Will stuck underneath a Arcane Bombardment, because then you may have the mana and not have cast anything yet, and you may want to exile the top three and see what you can play. Mana Geyser, at red for each tap land your opponent's control. Uh, mana Geyser is a, sp a great spell to lead directly into playing Ovika, and it does help sometimes. Five, you know, have six mana up, play a Mana Geyser, get a bunch of red mana, just add one blue and get Ovika out that way. It, it, it does work. Miss of Lost Lorien seems like a really interesting card. It can hurt us. Um... This could hurt us, potentially, but I think if we play it right, this could be really beneficial. It's a three mana sorcery with replicate, so if we pay a blue extra, we can copy it and choose new targets. But it says, return target non-land permanent and each other non-land permanent with the same mana value as that permanent to their owner's hands. The dangers of Lorian of Lorian is that we can't say Z, we can't pick a token because then it's going to get rid of all of our goblins. But what we could do is pick one or two, get rid of people's bounce people's mana rocks back to the hand, bounce people's creatures back to the hand. There's a lot of way we can do this uh, that I found kind of interesting. And so I, I think it's an interesting card. Again, more often than not, we're going to pick someone's commander or someone's important creature, bounce back to their hand, and anything with the same CMC on the battlefield is just going to be a casualty in trying to bounce that back to their hand. But again, we need to be careful not picking tokens so we don't lose our tokens. Mizzix Mastery, um, there are going to be games where we do not see Arcane Bombardment, so if we're going to be purposely dumping spells into our graveyard, we need another way to do it, and that is Mizzix Mastery. For eight mana, we get to exile every instant or sorcery from our graveyard, and then for each card exile this way, we copy it and cast it without paying its mana cost. So um, this is a way to take our graveyard full of spells, cast them all, get all the tokens from Obika, and potentially end the game on that turn. Monic Deluge, another way, reason why we're dumping things into our graveyard. Nine mana, exile the target instant or sorcery from our gra a graveyard, not even ours only. Copy that three times. We cast the copies without paying their mana cost. So with Ovika out, nine mana on the cast for Deluge, pick anything, get it three times. Again, just nine mana, mana worth of value. If we're going to bother to pay eight, nine, ten mana for a spell, we need to make sure that spell is more than worth it. And I love Monic Deluge because if I pitch this time stretcher, I pitch this extra turn, I cast this extra turn spell, nine mana is a great thing to target one of these for. Ponder, uh, look at the top three, put them back in any order, and we can shuffle who we want, draw a card. Uh, Preordain, scry two, draw a card. And Seer and Visions, draw a card, scry two. These were the three that I think I needed to have all three of them. I needed the card draw. I think I started off not thinking I did, but the more I played the deck, the more I realized the card draw helps because it gets you into more lands, gets you into more rocks. And, um, we don't mind sticking a preordain underneath a you know a, a arcane bombardment if need be because again extra draw is great. See the truth is a card I played a lot in casts because in that deck you're you're casting things out of your graveyard, but of course we in this scenario could potentially get it underneath that bombardment or out of that Mizzix mastery. So let's look at the top three. You put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom. But if it's cast from anywhere other than your hand, you put each of them into your hand instead. So. Just when you cast it from our hand, look at the top three, get one if we cast it for out of our graveyard, off of the bombardment, anything else, all three to our hand. 
uh, solve the equation for a little bit of search. Again, we want we want to search for something in particular. Um, I very seldom use solve the equation to go for an extra turn spell. Uh, more often than not, this is going for uh, you know something like Tasha's if I see the Storm Kings, or a big fun splashy spell if I see something else. Again, I just. Uh, I like to have some fun and trying to find fun fun spells to play together and so I'll almost always solve to go find a fun spell to combine with something else. Song of Totentans uh, from the new set X on a red to make X 1-1 one, one rat uh, creature tokens with this creature can't block and and then creatures all creatures we control gain haste until end of turn. This is great because for X red we're making X rats and X plus one goblins and then with a week out Everything has haste, which the goblins already did, but now the rats have haste. And the cool part is this, with a coat of arms out, means we have two creatures that are just going to get buffed to absolute high heaven and just be a fun attack. Again, I'm trying to find a way for this deck to be spell singing, but still taking advantage of the fun token stuff that I wanted to. <laughs> My favorite of the three spells that we're playing from these... Um, Lord of the Rings, uh, b uh, the new bundles, is Sorcerer's Squall, a nine mana spell with Delve, which is important. We are pitching cards with some of these draw spells, so we should potentially be able to delve this for even less. But obviously, if we delve it for less, we still uh, we still get the nine when it comes to Avika, which I think is important. But it says either target opponent mills nine cards, then you may cast an instant or sorcerer from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. That spell would be put into a graveyard exile instead. So here's what you do. You pick a player, they mill nine, and then you and and I would hope before you play the spell that you're targeting something in their graveyard. Um, I wouldn't go on a splunking mission for nine mana <laughs> to find something in their graveyard. I'd probably pick the player either that has something half decent in their graveyard, and maybe I get something better off of it, or has something I specifically want, and just then mill them for nine. And again, nine goblin tokens off of the cast, more off of whatever we cast out of their graveyard. Again, it just it feels really fun. And if you target the right person, we can probably get something pretty darn good. Surge to victory for six mana. We exile an ancient or sorcery from our graveyard. Creatures we control get plus X plus O until end of turn where X is that spell's mana value. And then whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player that turn, copy the exiled spell. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Um, the other reason we want to pitch cards into our graveyard is because for Surge to Victory. We Surge target something like Time Stretch with a board full of goblins, and then every goblin that hits is going to cast Time Stretch, but we're going to pay it for free, meaning we're going to get the 10 gobos, and you can start to see why something like Surge to Victory on the right card is just going to get, well, hideous. Or you pick something like Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and again, it's just going to get tough for our opponents because these spells that we're going to take advantage of are going to be there and be a ton of fun. We talked about Tasha's, and we end with Temporal Manipulation, Stretch, and Time Orb. Before we go through the creatures, we're playing one Planeswalker, and that's uh, Chandra Hope Speaking. Uh, the reason I'm playing Chandra is because uh, I originally was going to play Double Vision, an enchantment that says whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell, your turn, you can copy it. And I realized that Chandra does the exact same thing for one more mana, but it adds two mana every turn. It says whenever you cast instant or sorcery, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. It triggers only once per turn. The cool part about Chandra is, is it doesn't care about that spell being our first spell of any turn. It's just any time we cast one. So let's say we Jessica's Will into Chandra, and then we cast something else. Now Chandra will actually double it, whereas doubling double vision wouldn't have because it wasn't the first one in the turn. The, top, the plus two adds two mana in combination of colors. Plus one exiles the top five until the end of our next turn. We can cast an instant or sorcery from among them. And minus X deals damage to each up to two targets that add X damage. Again, we're most always going to be plus twoing this and taking advantage of the copy effect off of Chandra. So again, take the double vision, upgrade it into Chandra, which can also do other things as well. And again, that plus one also is kind of that um, impulse draw, you know, cast those things. As far as the creatures, um, this creature count's come pretty far down because, again, we're, we're just trying to get value. Balmore seems like an absolute no-brainer, especially with those with those goblins, because it's giving them plus one, plus one, and trample until end of turn. So now this makes them even harder to deal with, because let's say um, let's say they're two twos or three threes, and you know people can just chump them. But the thing with Balmore now is now you're giving them trample, and they're harder to deal with because you can't chump them as much anymore. Now you actually have to block them. Exalted Flamer. Another good reason to be dumping spells into our graveyard at the start of our upkeep, returning uh, random. 
uh, instant or sorcery from our graveyard to our hand. And whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, it deals one damage to each opponent. Um, I definitely put in it and gutter snipe more of these whenever you cast a spell, deal damage to each opponent type abilities. Because I realize that if we go on this game plan of the bombardment type style, we're going to be casting a ton of spells and this will help us end the game. Hop Goblin, Bandit Lord, uh, other goblins get Pulse of Pulse so that's great. And then Red and Tap it to deal damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under your control as turn to any target. This could snipe a creature, but more often than not, you know, make 12, 14 goblins, dome somebody for 14. Again, I like this ability. It's well worth the three mana. The Pulse of Pulse to the goblins, I think, is well worth the three mana alone. Being able to dome one for the damage, I think, makes it really worth it. I'm trying out Jenga Taxes because it's a draw engine. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell with you know, like three or more, we draw a card. It's a draw engine. I, I, I think it might be worth it. The backside seems kind of fun going down the um, Great Synthesis. I don't expect to be able to because I don't know how many times we're going to have seven cards in hand to make that work. Well, we're trying it for the draw. If the draw doesn't end up being as effective, I'd probably just take it out and put in another mana rock. Magnus the Red is going to be very helpful for us. Incinor Sorcery Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each token you control. This is a creature struggle. And this is great because the more goblins we make, the cheaper these massive spells become. And then we're just paying, you know, blue and red pips for these spells. And it just gets better for all of us. Well, and better for us right now. Better for the whole table. And whenever it does damage to a player, we, we make the spawn token. Again, Magnus isn't here to make the token. Magnus is here to make all of our spells cheaper. Uh, Perforos and Witty Roast Master do the same thing as Impact Tremors in our deck. Whenever a creature comes in, Perforos deals two damage to each opponent. Witty Roast Master deals one, just like Impact Tremors. So now we have three different cards in the deck that all deal damage every time a, a spell or a creature comes in. So cast a five mana spell with... Ovika out, make five goblins with either Witty or Impact, you're dealing five. With Perforos, you're dealing ten. And you start to see how that can help us end the game. Skirk Prospector, sacrifice a goblin to make a red mana. This is great because we can take those goblins that just came in this turn that we don't necessarily want to attack with yet. Turn them into red mana and start playing more permanents or getting more things on the board. Storm Kiln Artist... Whatever we cast or copy, we get a treasure and it gets plus one plus zero for each artifact we have. Again, the Magecraft is important, especially for things like um, Arcane Bidmer and things like that. It's going to net us mana as we're casting those spells. Uh, things like Melonic Deluge or things like that where it let us copy a spell. Again, we're, we're, we're netting treasures out of it. We're getting more and more things. Third Path Iconoclast, where we cast a non-creature spell, we get a 1-1 one, one artifact token. Again... We can use that for the uh, for the Phyrexian Altar. We can use that for the Goblin Bombardment. Again, there's plenty of ways we can use those two tokens even when they're created. And they are artifacts if we want to play into that at all. Varen, going to double up any triggered ability of a permanent that triggers on a, on a spell being cast. This is a ton of fun because this will double Arcane Bombardment. This will double Ovika. And this will double a lot more other uh, really cool things. So I love Varen and it just gets bigger every time we cast a copy of spell and it can become a target in its own right. Let me know what you guys think of Ovika down in the comments. Again, it's a little sweaty with the extra turn spells. I think you could just as easily take those out, slam some... Crack with powers and Jai emulating Inferno style effects into those slots. And I think the deck still does mostly what we want it to do. My intention with the turn spells is just to help uh, end the game. Uh, because at the end of the point, at the end of the day, we're going to need to hit, hit it in with the gobbles at some point. And uh, I think the extra turns help us with that, of course, greedily, but they do help us with that. But let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.